I'm Paul from Bellowex and I'm going to talk to you about what I take cycle touring and some of my favourite kit. During this video we'll look at the fundamental kit I take with me to multi-day tours lasting up to a week. Myself and Sarah have been cycling since we can remember. And when we first met, both of us were heavily into mountain biking. But in the last 10, 12 plus years, we're super into touring, uh, whether that's day tours or multi-day tours. So the bikes that we tour on, Sarah has a Trek bike that she's owned for almost 20 years. I have a Brompton and I have a George Longstaff touring bike. We've been to lots of places all over Scotland. We've done multi-day tours in the Outer Hebrides. I've toured from the top of Wales to the bottom of Wales, toured through Cornwall, Devon. Uh, further afield, we've done tours through France, Spain, Portugal. We've cycled in Brazil. Uh, I was lucky enough to take the Brompton to Berlin for an extended week, which was great. So we do have quite a varied experience of cycle touring, camping, and generally fun stuff. We would love to know your cycle touring must-haves, so the kit, equipment and things that you really need to take with you when you go cycle touring, please let us know in the comments section below. The equipment I'm going to show you in this video has been refined over, as I said, about 12 years. When we first started camping and cycle touring, I couldn't afford all of the items I'm going to show you in the video in one go. I started with heavier sleeping bags heavier tents, heavier cooking equipment. So I don't want anyone to feel as though like they have to go out and buy all this stuff or, you know, because it actually, in terms of investment, it's quite a lot of money. Part of me doesn't know whether it's better to just buy good stuff initially because then actually you don't need to upgrade it at a later date. But I'm going to show you the equipment here that I've been using for over five years and hasn't changed in five years. So I'm super happy with it used it consistently time after time and know the longevity is good. Now we'll look at toolkit, what we take with us uh, on our cycle tours. We have our bikes serviced regularly. I've been a bike mechanic for 17 years, so I do all the work on our bikes. And I do loads of servicing work for people that are going on multi-day tours a week, a month long. And generally I find that people don't have an issue mechanically with their bike as long as they have them serviced. There, there can be stuff that comes up, but as long as your bike has decent parts, decent tires, um, and is serviced well, it will minimize the kind of mechanical issues. Therefore, you don't need to take an abundance of tools and parts, and you can slim down your toolkit. So, most important piece of kit is a multi-tool. This one's from Topic. There's lots of different ones, and you just need to make sure that you have one that suits all the kind of nuts and bolts on your bike. It's really important to have a chain breaker. The reason is if you get a snap chain, you can use these to remove one of the bigger links and insert a missing link. So this one, a gold one is for nine speed and you can, that's basically such an easy repair. We'll do a video on it and we'll cover it. We take a pump that's usually strapped to our bike but we also take CO2 canisters. So these are a really simple way to blow up your tires, especially on a road bike or a tire that you want to get up to kind of 70 plus PSI. Sometimes the little hand pumps, the chamber's just not big enough and you can be there for hours and hours and hours trying to get it up. If there's a local bike shop nearby, you know somebody who's got a pump nearby, then that's brilliant. Just get a little bit of air in and go and actually use like a track pump. But this is another solution if you need to get a tire up to a good PSI. This make specifically a Z-Fow. Tire levers, two to three tire levers, plastic, not metal. The metal ones just will ruin rims, basically. I don't know many places that sell metal ones these days, but yeah, plastic because you want nice plastic against alloy rather than kind of steel against alloy that will just ruin the alloy. Inner tubes. Take two, because if you use one, then you don't have a spare one. As well as inner tubes, we take the Park Tool Super Patch. It's a glueless system, so you don't have to wait for glue to dry. You just sand down around the hole in the inner tube, 
stick on a patch and you're good to go. So the best way to prevent punctures on your bike when touring, road cycling, gravel riding, mountain biking or commuting is to have good, decent tyres. If you've got good, decent tyres, you're unlikely to have an issue. If you do, you've got inner tubes and patches. If for some reason you go over some glass and it makes a huge rip in your tyre, this is a good option. So it's a toothpaste packet, basically. And what you can do is you can cut it and you can basically line the inside of your tyre. I have practical experience of this touring with friends who haven't had good tyres and we've used this and it's lasted for hundreds upon hundreds of miles. So if you get a slit, you stick it up there using some tape and you're good to go. Zip ties, zip ties are good to take. Here's just a couple, it's good to take lots of different sizes, mainly if luggage breaks uh, or there's something or rack breaks, zip ties are brilliant. If we're going for a long period of time, depending on your bike, it's sometimes worth taking a free hub. Now, you do need some specific tools to do this and knowledge, but a free hub basically sits in your back wheel and your cogs slot onto it. Shimano ones, for example, are a non-serviceable item. So they turn one way and allow you to freewheel like that. If the insides of these break, what happens is your whole drivetrain, so anything attached to your chain will just spin without you pedaling on it. So it's a bit of a problem if you're out touring because to get a specific one for your bike could take up to a week or longer. So what we do is we always carry this just in case we need it, we can get a bike shop to fit it or I'll take the parts uh, needed uh, to fit it myself. It's a bit of a disastrous repair. If it happens, it's a bit unfortunate, but definitely if you're going away for weeks and weeks on end and you've got say a Shimano hub, you definitely would want to take one of these. I should mention that there's one thing you'll see in the background that we're not taking with us. Unfortunately, our big boy Mikey here is a bit too big for cycle touring. It's not his cup of tea. So he goes and stays with relatives or friends when we go cycle touring. Sleeping systems. Right, so I use quite a few. I used to be a mountain leader, summer mountain leader as well. So depending on the expeditions, I would potentially bivy, stay in boffies, stay in hoop bivvies, tents. So I had quite a lot of different sleeping systems depending on the weather. Before I start talking about my sleeping system, uh, just to let you know that we don't always go touring with our tents. Sometimes we use boffies, B&Bs, hotels, or we go away in our van. At the moment, um, we have a lovely tent from Force 10, a Helium 2. It's great. It's quite small, I'd say, for cycle touring, but it works really well and it's super light. It's only 1.4 kilograms. We did have another tent, which was a Coleman tent, and had that for almost, almost 20 years. But we used it a lot last year and unfortunately just the seams were going and we looked at getting it repaired but it was just a bit too far gone. But we did have 18 years out of it. So we are looking at a wild country tent, which will have a big enough porch to put our Bromptons in and we can cook in it. So, but for now, uh, that's the tent we're using and it is super light, so that's really nice. I like using a tarp and I'm gonna be experimenting a bit this year with a uh, tarp set up with the Brompton to see if I can use the Brompton to hold the tarp up in kind of a pyramid TP shape. But there's lots of different setups that you can use with a tarp. Um, you can have bikes upside down, you can use wheels, you can make ridge tents, you can take a pole with you, you can use trees. So this is the DD Superlight tarp. It's three meters by three meters, so quite big. It works really well. And I think if I go inside, I maybe treated it to some Hilleberg pegs which may be a little bit over the top, but hey ho, why not? But if the weather is really good, and in Scotland the midges aren't being too bad, then I do like to just take a bivy bag. If you know it's gonna be wall to wall sunshine on a multi-day tour, or even just for one night, it's well worth taking just a bivy bag. So this is an out kit bivy bag that I really like. I have never tested it in full on rain. If I know it's going to rain heavily, then I wouldn't go bivvying. And sometimes you don't even need a bivvy bag, just sleep in your sleeping bag. 
the benefits of it is it's super lightweight, super packable piece of kit. And if you can, I've done day trips and overnights where I haven't taken a tent and I just take a bivy bag. Continuing with sleeping system, here for my sleeping bag, I have a Terra Nova Voyager 800. They don't make these anymore. As you can see, it's quite big, but because it's down, it fits into a tiny little bag like this. It's probably, it's a good free season sleeping bag, goes down to about zero degrees and then any less you just put warm stuff on but it goes down to a nice neat little package that's the benefit of down if i was gonna buy another down product you do have to be really careful where the down comes from and you really want to be sourcing a product that has ethical down because the down industry can be quite brutal so i wouldn't jump to get another down sleeping bag i like this one but i would hopefully keep this for a long time. Here, I have the Firmarest Neo Air. Actually in quite a big form at the moment, but it goes down super, you can roll it super, super, super tight. It's a great sleeping mat. It inflates to about this big. I won't do it now because it takes ages. Love it, absolutely love it. It makes a bit of noise at night. Some people when they've camped near me have complained about the noise. If you're using it quite intensely, it can fill with moisture. So when I was doing a lot of mountain leader work, it did kind of smell a bit. The smell does go, but it's basically because you're blowing moisture into the sleeping mat. You, you basically get condensation inside and therefore damp. But a great product. Sarah's got one as well, and we both love them. Cycle touring, I do like the bike to be as light as possible. I don't really enjoy a hugely laden bike. I will choose to kind of rough it in some areas, so I don't take a pillow with me. I just use clothes all kind of bundled together. As a seat, I just use this nice multi-mat foldable sit mat. It's great, just nice and simple. Also it acts as a nice, you can have it like this and it acts as a nice bit of solid base if you're putting something on top of your rack. Um, that's a great bit of equipment that is. So don't be too alarmed if the dog's twitching in the background. It's just what greyhounds do when they're deep asleep. Clothes. Uh, as an outer layer, I always wear high vis. I love it. I get taken the mick out of for it, but I don't care. I, I wear a gilet if I'm not wearing a jacket. Jacket wise, uh, I've got a nice orange jacket from <gasps> Rafa. So I must be cool if I've got Rafa, um, but it's a great jacket. It's a bit of a bin bag, so it can be a bit sweaty, but I found like when I've been on the west coast of Scotland and I need a shield, and I suppose like a real kind of shield over me, that is great. When I've had to lend this to Sarah for tours and I've worn my lightweight road jacket, I've actually been stood there freezing. So that I absolutely love and she's not getting it back. Helmet, helmet debate. We might do a video about helmets, but I, it's a gyro helmet. Absolutely love it. Never go on a bike without a helmet. I take a jersey with me. Uh, this is a winter jersey. And funnily enough, it's got our logo on it. So this is garments by Preska, who do uh, recycle clothing and all their clothing sustainable. So yeah, look them up. They can they can explain themselves better than I can. But we have had these for a few years now, and they're absolutely brilliant. Including we've got a gilet, and then we've got this kind of summer jersey just here. Winter wise, I've got some lovely Pearl Zumi gloves. So they've got primer loft in them, uh, which is like a synthetic down and my hands have never been cold in these gloves. They are absolutely great. I'll take them, unless it's super warm, I'll always take them cycle touring because they're good at night. Um, or if you get into difficulty and you need to cycle at night. So great purchase. Sticking wheel with the Pearl Zumi theme. I have some kind of mid-weight gloves uh, for kind of summer, spring, summer riding, maybe autumn and winter. And I've got some mitts uh, somewhere as well that I'll take summer riding. Waterproof socks. Now I've got overshoes and I do use overshoes, but sealskin waterproof socks, I absolutely love. I'm not sure what the quality is like these days because I think these are about 10 years old, as you can tell. 
but I absolutely love them. They don't still don't let in water. If you ever buy a pair of these, you can't wash them above 30 degrees. Otherwise the membrane kind of shrinks like that. And I tell you that from experience, but yeah, that seal skins, waterproof socks, always good to have summer, winter, autumn or spring. So I love buffs or scarves. This is a buff. It's a merino buff. It goes over your head like so. And great for cold mornings, winter riding. It's not too heavy. So when I go walking, I've got more of a fleece one that I wear, but this is perfect for cycling because it's just not too heavy. You can also turn it into a hat and do all this stuff and twiddle it about. So there's loads of instructions that come with them. So there's a few more uses than just a scarf. Got some winter tights from Ultura that I'll take really on any cycle tour just to have on the evening. These oh, I've had for years and years and years. I've had to sew them up so many times. Ultura, I think now do an equivalent. They stopped making these ones, but I absolutely love these. They're not super tight like Lycra. So if you go into a cafe, you won't get arrested. And I just, yeah, love these. Uh, it's a shame in the summer from day riding when I have to put these away, because I do love riding these, riding with these. I always wear padded cycling boxer shorts. And in the summer I wear not tight, but cycling shorts, but not tight ones, just kind of like mountain bike shorts. I always like to take a nice warm jacket. Uh, going on the Primaloft theme, I take this Gore bike wear jacket. They don't make these anymore, I'm pretty sure. So I need to keep this nice and safe because it is just wonderful. For kind of freezing rides on an evening, uh, it's just absolutely delightful. It's quite lightweight compared to other kind of bigger jackets. So yeah, absolutely love it. So to finish off the clothing section of the video, uh, just going to show you my shoes. Um, I love touring with SPD shoes, so they clip in at the bottom. These shoes I've had for a ridiculous amount of time, and sorry that there's been a bit of a theme about me having lots of equipment for ages that it's not falling apart, but as you can tell with these, they're just well used, but they've still got loads of life left in them, and Shimano don't make these ones anymore, so I'm loathed to get rid of them, especially as there's so much life in them. Great because the cleat itself is recessed. They're great for walking around. The only thing they're not good for is going on hikes. So I don't know if anyone has any suggestions on some nice lightweight footwear I can take as well as these. So these will be my main cycling, walking to a cafe, walking around shoes, going to the pub. But then I need something lightweight with good traction for going and walking and going off the path, you know, if you've locked your bike up uh, and you want to go for a little stomp. One of my most considered purchases or bit of equipment that I've kind of obsessed about the most with camping is my setup, cooking setup. So I know a lot of people have jet boils and there's lots of trangias and all of this stuff, but I really wanted a compact, light setup. So it starts with the MSR Titan Titanium kettle. What do we have inside? So the titanium kettle itself basically just boils water and it does cook meals. It's pretty much non-stick. Sometimes if you burn stuff in there you do need to give it kind of a heavy clean. And the items that I use with it, I have a titanium fork. It's like a spork but it's a different make. And that's great. I have a lovely little stove. I believe this is also an MSR, yeah, pocket rocket. As you can tell, it's been well used and it just goes onto the gas canister, screws round. You can get small ones, you can get bigger ones for really kind of multi-day tours and it's lovely. Uh, it's not as stable as some of the cookers that are on the ground and then you have a tube that comes to the gas canister, but it's super lightweight and the whole aim of this setup was for it to fit in here. I'll talk about this bit in a second. And then this is the Piesta de Resistance. So, what is this? Cup. Lovely. So I think this is C to Summit cup. It folds down. Lovely and fits exactly in there. And that's exactly what I wanted. Now, 
lighting the stove, what do you do? Do you take a lighter? Well, lighters can go wrong. So I generally don't take a lighter with me. Instead, I take a flint and a steel. And as you can tell, this one's quite well used. And this just creates a spark. So you just put that on there and it creates a nice spark. And that's enough to get your gas going. It's fully waterproof, so if it gets wet, it's not a problem, it still sparks. It's much more reliable than a lighter. I love to take with me, as well as having my route on a phone or a guidebook, is an OS map. It's great to have knowledge of the local area. Cycle touring in Scotland, these can give you so much information about local points to walk to, and that's the same across the UK as a whole. This is a one in 25,000, uh, so it doesn't cover as big an area as the pink one in 50,000, so they're usually a little bit better for cycle touring. Locks, I always take a lock with me cycle touring. I've got a choice of two. I've got an Abbas kind of mini U-lock. It's quite heavy. Uh, it can be a bit bulky for some of the Caradice bags I have. Uh, so in that case, I use a kryptonite lock. This isn't rated as well as the Abbas lock, but as you can tell, it, for cycle touring, it folds up nicely. Toothbrush. <laughs> Head torch, always important. You've got the light on your phone, but you don't always want to run your phone battery down. I take a book, that's my current one, uh, but I always take a book to read. I take a monocular, I love this monocular, it's super small, and just means you can see loads of wildlife. Just brings a different element going for a little walk on an evening once you've packed up. Uh, your cooking stuff and you've had your dinner and you can go for a nice walk and go and look at the wildlife. Always take a phone. Myself and Sarah are very fortunate to have charging devices on our bikes so these always get plugged in at the start of a tour and our devices uh, are charged by a dynamo hub and they charge the phones at 10% an hour and we found especially when we've gone camping it's brilliant just to have that constant charge. So on a few day tour, you never really dip below kind of 60%, but always I take a phone charger as most of us will. And we always take lights with us, uh, flashing ones, so red on the back, clear on the front. And we also take lights like this so we can see where we're going. Uh, this one from Light in Motion is brilliant. You can actually submerse it in water uh, and it won't take on any water or get wet. They the technology for these lights come from diving. Yeah, they're designed to get wet, be submerged, and they're great. 500 lumens is a good starting point if you want to light up the road ahead of you. If you're mountain biking, you probably want a bit more, um, but these for us uh, are great. So for bags, we use Ortley bags and Caradice bags. These are Sarah's Ortley bag that she's had for almost 20 years and they're just so robust. I've got one on the front of my Brompton um, and it's really good. And we just use a combination of bags depending on how much we're taking and how long we're going for. We'll be doing a Brompton specific video about touring setup and how we load the Brompton, so for ease of use. So I'll show you the bags I use on the Brompton in that video. So thanks for watching the video. As you can tell, Mikey's enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, please let us know. Uh, we've covered just the fundamentals of what I like to take bicycle touring. In the video, we didn't want to go into too much detail with clothes and food as it's such a vast topic, depending on where you're going, when you're riding. Also, we sometimes like to take wine and quite heavy stuff with us. So the kind of whole lightweight thing will go out the window if we start talking too much about food. Um, but please let us know if there's any Think you like to take with you food wise or in any recommendations i'm myself a vegetarian so it's really good to know if there's any really nice veggie meals that you have around the campfire uh, or around the tent in the evenings